and welcome to a freshly grounded, the brand new podcast. Well, it's not exactly brand new anymore, is it? Welcome to freshly grounded, the podcast. That's better. Created by best friends, Faisal and Sam. Huh? Welcome, I said, welcome to Freshly Grounded. After that bit. Created by... After that bit. Best friends, Faisal and Sam. Really? Cool. All right. Assalamu alaikum, Sam. Wa alaikum assalam, Faisal. So you're, you're in America right now, in America. How are you doing, yes. bro? What? What was that? Sorry. sorry. I, I, I felt <laughs> awful even trying that, actually. Um, um, so, it was good. Yeah. So you're, uh, so you're, you're in Portland to, right now? I'm in Portland, Oregon, USA. I've been trying to perfect my American accent. I'm not going to attempt it here now, but I've been told by the locals that it's starting to sound pretty good. That's good. So I started chanting the local basketball team. I'm kind of chanting that as much as I can. I'm going to the basketball game on Monday, uh, nice. getting involved with everything, the culture. I'm going to go some ice hockey tonight and uh, generally just getting stuck in with the, uh, the culture. I like that. So, what's the uh, local basketball team called? Blazers, Portland Blazers. Blazers. Never You've heard of them. Seen them before? You, ha- you probably have. You've not probably even seen once. the logo. Definitely not. Sorry. Maybe the logo. Maybe uh, the logo. Definitely not would, heard that you name. Would have seen <clears throat> Blazers, Portland Blazers. You I mean? Yeah, I reckon you recognise the logo. I'm going to Google it right now. Um, so, and the what's the name? What about the ice hockey? What's that team? Um, I've forgotten. <laughs> Portland Blazers. No, never seen the na- never seen the logo. Never heard. Have you? No, never. Where have you been? <laughs> I've, uh, I've no. I, I've seen, I can't. I can't claim anything here. I've never heard of them. They didn't exist sure. until one minute thirty six seconds ago in my life. So fair enough. Um, I um. I used to record. I used to. I used to be like basketball when I was younger. I think I might have just like. That's come that's obvious. It, the logo and stuff. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that's that's Monday. I'm going to see the Blazers, which is I'm, I'm really looking forward to. Um, and uh, yeah, are you saying you used to like basketball? Is like me saying I used to watch cricket. Yeah. Yeah. So this <laughs> did you ever play it though? Yeah, I played it. I wasn't great, but I played it. I played it. I played it. I, I tried. I used to go to basketball club, and uh, I used to get involved as much as I could. I'm not going to sit here and claim that I was particularly great, but I tried. I think I liked. I think I liked the uh, everything around it more than the actual game itself. I love it as a sport. I love the culture behind it. I love the basketball shoes that I used to get my mum to buy me, and I used to like love all that. But when it came to shooting hoops, probably wasn't the strongest thing I've done. Yeah, I think the culture of basketball was very strong. I like that. I from the outside looking in, uh, yeah. I'm kind of jealous. Like that, I'm not a, a, a basketball fan because it looks like a culture that I could really get down with. You know. Yeah, you do know, you do know, right? <laughs> so, um, what is that? Fresh think, orange juice? I think what I know that? what you mean. It's a fresh <laughs> orange juice, Faisal. Nice, nice, nice. It's a fresh yeah. orange juice. I just got the ice from down the hall, from the ice machine. Oh, sweet, sweet. I'm, I'm, I'm always, I'm, I'm skeptical about uh, getting ice when I'm traveling because obviously we know that, we, well, we know that the water, the, the tap water in the UK is so pure, right? So, um, we don't, we don't stress about it. Uh, but, um, but yeah, because I, I I think I was advised that once, like be be conscious of getting too much ice outside and stuff. So anyway, Sam, your um your uh, yeah. your trip to America this time seems. I know you've been to America a few times. I've never been to America, uh, so I know America as um as what I see on screen. That's the America that I know, mm-hmm. uh, which yeah. seems cool. Uh, but you've been a few times. However, this time looks like you're arguably um indulging in the culture and the just the you're enjoying it more from that's from your stories that's what I, that's what i'm inferring from your stories would that be an accurate analysis so i have been to the states a number of times when i was younger i was lucky enough to travel to miami california sorry california i did, I did the, the, the west coast i did new york i did lots of different places when i was younger and it was amazing but my memory kind of like has gone a little bit from it so and I've been to New York a couple of times in, in the last few years, which I've always loved. But I suppose the different thing with this trip is um, I love the States. I love American people. I really like it. I feel like I'm in a film the whole time. 
Uh, but the main main different thing is, you know, we have a salon here, we have a team here, so we have a community of people here. My business partner is local; they're all local guys. So I'm getting like the authentic, the authentic local vibe, the feel, rather than kind of being a tourist in town, like trying to like find out what to do. I'm just I'm just here with with the people. So just uh, I basically requested to go to the most like traditionally like American places, like American diners, in, in the morning for some eggs. Um, and yeah, just trying to like explore it. I, lo- I love it to be honest. I find it really interesting. It's like oh, we were talking about last night that we're we're so far from home, but you know everyone around us is so similar. We all look pretty much the same and whatever else, but they speak so so differently and and there's such a different way about people here. And it's just it's just interesting. Like it's very interesting. I just find it interesting. I'm just kind of like I'm still digesting the whole place, um, and I'm just trying to get as many videos and stuff as I can of like different things I see because I love it and I just think it's. Uh, it's just, it's just mental. It's amazing, um, and I'm, yeah, I'm just, I'm just digesting it still. But I think the difference with this trip is, um, I'm being more authentic. I'm, I'm, I'm with the locals, doing local things, and uh, yeah, just enjoying it. I suppose. Yeah. I suppose before you weren't visiting for the sake of your of, of opening a store, right? Like even when you were in New York, even if you were on business, it wasn't for opening a store. No, and I'm not opening a store here. We, we've actually had a store here for um, a couple of years now, but I haven't been able right, to get okay, here because yeah, of COVID fine. and stuff. So thanks for paying attention. I've had, yeah, a, sorry, I've had, a, about that. Right, yeah. I've had a men's fire in the USA for a long time uh, with uh, <laughs> right, right, yeah. Mr. Carl Tate over here in Portland, Oregon. I think you must have seen me post that. I mean, I posted. No, it you know time. what I have so, now that you say that I, I have. Yeah, I have. I think you have to unmute my stories on Instagram <laughs> so you can see what I'm doing. Um, but yeah, no, bro, it's like a, it's like oh, bro, like um, I'm I'm super grateful for being here because I'm in like a men's fire, which is a proper men's fire. Like everything down to the, to a T is men's fire, the fragrance, everything. So it's amazing finally being here and, and being in my shop. Um, it's been a long time since I've been able to come here, you know, the whole sort of pandemic and COVID and everything else. Um, and, uh, just, it's really nice to finally get here and see it, but it's been here a while and, um, it kind of opened at a, a real tough time. Opened. There's a lot of stuff politically going on in in Portland with sort of the protests and and okay, all that kind of stuff. Various different things. So they they've really had a, a hard time over the couple of years. And you can kind of still see it. it's quite prevalent. To be honest, there's there's a lot of homeless people around, and, and downtown has kind of sort of gone downhill. A lot of businesses are closed and things like that. So it's now kind of like after COVID and everything else, they're they're kind of on back on the up and, and trying to sort of clear up the city a little bit. But you can you can really see how COVID has had an effect uh, on Portland. Um, it's quite scary and upsetting, really, but it's good to know that they're back on the rise, but they've really been through it. And where our shop is situated downtown, um, prior to pandemic and COVID and whatever else, it was, you know, booming and, and a very busy place. And now it's kind of, it's still, it's still busy, but it's, it's changed a lot. And um, there's a lot going on politically here and there's, they're, 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 you know, voting in new people and, and there's lots, there's lots going on here, as you can imagine. And they're just trying to sort the city out a little bit, but, yeah, it's been interesting to come and see it, and uh, I've heard a lot about it, and, and, and to be here and to enjoy it is, is, is amazing, and it's not really like anywhere else I've visited in, in the United States. Um, and it makes me want to go and like visit more states and go and like learn a bit more about America, because there's obviously so, there's just so many places here. They're all quite different. They all have sort of different things going on, different cultures, different vibes. Um, yeah, it just makes, just makes you kind of like your mind open to realize actually how big the world is, and especially how big America is and how many different things are going on here so yeah Do, you know so well, one of the guys that i work with or a few of the guys that i work with at tartil they are from boston in america and i know that the Bo- boston like i've seen a lot of that on the screen before and that seems to have like a, a a real culture to it a lot of irish people in boston a lot of like irish heritage and then the accent is like is like has is very um unique does do, does does portland or like oregon have like a unique accent or is it just like the standard american that you would hear on the tv it's probably slightly unique. Probably, I don't want to definitely say it's the standard that you'd hear on TV. I think that's more maybe insulting to the whole lot of the Americans because there's so many, there is so many different things going on. I would say from what I've seen, it seems quite normal, I would suppose. Um, like when you go to uh, New York, you can really hear like that New York accent is, is quite strong and different. And, you know, and like you said, the Boston. But I think here, it's, right, I think yeah. it's from my understanding, it seems to be the normal American accent from so far. That's what I've picked up. Oh, I'm glad to hear, man. I, I I'm enjoying yeah. watching your stories, man. Keep up, keep keep up. They're not muted, so uh, keep uploading them because they're like, <laughs> they're very they're very interesting. I'm really enjoying them. I um. Thank you, man. I will. You're you're with you're with uh, uh, Josh as well, right? You're, you're traveling with Josh. 
Yes, I'm with Josh, Jordan and Sean. So the four of us from the UK are here. Um, today is the first day of um, the main reason that we came here, other than to sort of check in with the shop and, and, and see the team and everything else. There's a two-day education program now. So there's 21 students that have come from all over the U United States that are going to be um, hosted for the next two days in our academy, which we've got as an academy over here as well. Really? Sick. So today and, <clears throat> today and tomorrow is a two-day look and learn um, so as soon as I finish this podcast, I'll fly over to the academy where there's going to be lots of people. And it'll be a really good couple of days of, of men's by education, led by Josh and, and Sean. Nah. Nice. That's how it should be. Let's be honest now. When, when have I, when, when have I ever? Yeah, yeah, it's true. It's true. Yeah. I mean, you know I think you, you like uh, Gambia... <laughs> you have you taught you taught you taught the orphans in Gambia how to cut hair. It's as noble of you to put your um, your your non-teaching kind of like rules to the side for that. No, I haven't got I haven't got no teaching rules. I just I'm not involved in the edu I'm not involved <laughs> in the education part of my company. Yeah, fine. So I wrote some notes for um, I wrote some notes for like one of the one of the things to discuss with the, in this episode with you. So. Um, mm -hmm. We did we did that last time. And I think it worked out quite well. So I would be like, you know, um, in, anytime I've had some kind of spare time engaging with my brain, uh, writing down some notes. And so like the most prominent thing, as kind of always ends up being with us, with you and I when we discuss things, is like, I, I, I suppose our discussions always tend to be around either, um, I don't know, like they always tend, like end up um, traveling towards either business, finances, or, or, or like the management of personal finances or, um, or at least in recent times, right? Like I suppose like more so finances. And so that, I think more so because kind of like things are changing so so rapidly, uh, especially in my life, like, you know, kids and stuff. Just if, when we started Freshly Grounded, we didn't, I, you had one kid, I didn't have any. So with that said, the thing that kind of fell, fell to me when I was kind of doing this thing was was, was about finances again and I was considering doing this video on Freshly Grounded but I thought it'd be a good opportunity to just maybe just narrow it out with Sam and the, the concept of the video is going to be like five uh, five rules five five new rules that I'm trying to live my life by five, five new financial rules I'm trying to live my life by right and so for, for, rather than making this video to, 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 to run those new rules that I'm trying to live my life by with you mm -hmm. and seeing if you have any like if you resonate with them or if you have any advice on them or whatever so sure um Okay, so the rule number one that I've like realized quite recently, which is weird because I'm 28 years old, is that accepting finances is something that you'll have to consciously deal with. So, uh, sorry, accepting that finances are something that you have to consciously deal with, right? So until now okay. in my life, I've um, had this idea that one day I just want to reach a level of wealth where I don't have to worry about, not worry, sorry, I don't have to consciously think about finances what goes in what goes out doesn't matter i don't have to think about it that was the level like when i was perhaps younger i thought is the level to reach and therefore why do i have to learn financial literacy if it doesn't really matter it's not going to change if i need to spend something i'll spend it if i don't need to spend something i won't spend it that was my that was like in my in my idea recently i've decided that i that one must accept that finances are something that you have to consciously deal with the reason i've come up with uh, that theory now or that that under, that rule or, or myself now is because of three main things one or two of them are things i've already discussed with you well all three are probably things i've discussed with you so one of them is is that i through freshly grounded have had the honor of meeting some incredibly wealthy individuals like people who own business conglomerates to you know professional athletes and, and so on and so forth and i think the beautiful thing about freshly grounded is that you end up getting a you, you end up getting more of more conversation out of these these people than a normal person would because i suppose like the feel and the vibe of FG and of a podcast is quite open and people feel quite open to have these conversations with us. And so sometimes when I've wanted, like, I've always, like, asked people for their advice on certain things. Um, and so from that, what I learned is, is that the wealthy people, the wealthiest people that we've interviewed, when I've spoken to them about finances, some of the millionaires, um, they, they consciously think about money. They're conscious about it. 
It doesn't mean they're, it doesn't mean that they're great with money. It doesn't mean that they're bad with money. But they are consciously thinking about it. They haven't got to the level, even at multi multi million millionaires, big businessmen, so on and so forth. They haven't got to the level where they're like, I don't know or care what's happening with my card. They know and they care. And so small decisions. I think I spoke to you about this one before. Like um, one very wealthy individual I know, he was taking a flight, and this guy. I assume flies first class every flight. Like it, it would not be an object for him to n not do that. Yet when he um, was traveling one particular short trip, um, it, it somehow came out in conversation that he, he he traveled economy. And I was like, oh, like why did you travel economy? And he was like, it's such a short trip. Like why would I spend ten times the price to travel first class? Like it's just two hours or whatever. And that made me realize that people even on that level are consciously actively thinking about their wealth, even if they don't, even, they could be reckless with it. The second thing that made me uh, create this rule was that um, obviously, as you know, there was a period of time a few years ago when I was like consuming so much Dave Ramsey content. And one of his rules is um, every pound should have a label on it. And we've discussed this at nauseum on the podcast. There's that like, you should never have a piece of, you should never have a pound in your bank account that you don't have a label on. Like you can't just say, oh, that's generically for if things pop up. No, if it's for things pop up, you put a label on it uh, for that for that for that thing and the third thing that made me create this rule is what we discussed again on this podcast before which was that discussion about money systems and about what Ramit Sethi wrote in his book which was that if you randomly land on ten thousand dollars today like something comes up you you forgot but somebody owes you like loads of money is ten thousand dollars is landed in your account today what do you do with it and um, he said that most people they'll say you know I'd go on a holiday I would buy this thing I would like um whatever, right? But he said that all of those are the wrong answers. The correct answer is, is that if I landed on any random piece of money today, it would fall into my money system. So everybody should have a money system um, and, and therefore it trickles perfectly into that money system. Like, oh, I, when I get this amount of money, this much goes into there, this much goes into there, this much goes into there. What that alluded to me was that even at his level, um, and he advises very wealthy individuals like Tim Ferriss, for example, uh, he's actively speaking to them about being conscious about uh, their money. So rule number one that I'm implementing is accepting that finances are something you'll have to consciously deal with. The sooner you accept that fact, then you can live your life um, starting to accept that finances are something you have to think about actively, regularly. What do you reckon about that? <clears throat> What do I reckon about everything that you just said? Um, so I was listening to your first feelings about how you kind of viewed finance and as long as kind of there was a bit there and everything was kind of covered and you wouldn't sort of think about it too much and kind of like almost be sort of ignorant to your money and as long as it's flowing, no questions asked. Um, and I was kind of like almost relating to that in a, a tiny portion of it and thinking, yeah, in some ways like, I don't like to try and have my mind constantly um, thinking about money and, and what's what and what's coming in, what's going out and, and the future and that kind of stuff because I find it sometimes a bit overwhelming and, and stressful but if I'm honest over the last couple of years um, I find myself very very in tune with, with money to the last penny um, and um, what's coming in, what's going out, the stuff that's going out, what's it going on, um, just kind of like really reviewing everything to, to a fine detail and I've kind of been a little bit kind of like obsessed with it but I mean, in a, it's in a healthy way. It's not sort of like a like a. It's kind of taken over my mind, but it's kind of like, I suppose as I've as I've sort of climbed um, climbed up in in life and been able to sort of open more businesses, everything else, dealing with with finance and understanding what you, what do you do with money? Because when I was younger, when I used to earn a, you know a little bit of money, which I thought was a reasonable amount of money, that money would come in and, and it would go out straight away. It would go out on clothes, it would go out on going out, it would go out on holidays, it would go out on everything, and that was my sort of process. Whatever came in, as long as I was paying the bills and eating nice, everything else could sort of go. And fortunately, over the years of, of learning and actually earning a little bit more, the more I've earned, the more I've actually realized that actually I, I want to save and actually and, and do goodness with, with that money. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's something that I'm trying to figure out. And it's something that you really have to put sort of time into, you know, studying financial literature, etc. Um, being ignorant to, to, to wealth and, and, and finance and money at any level is 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 foolish. I think even like you said, the people of, of, of great wealth, millionaires, etc., they're very aware of what's coming in, what's coming out. And I don't think I don't think you can ever turn a blind eye um, to it because you know it can it can disappear very quickly. Um, although that even the people who've got a huge amount of money, if one bad mistake, the whole thing can sort of disappear. So I think it's about being like really sort of tuned on, not to become obsessed with it necessarily, but being really tuned on 
Um, and like I said, over the last couple of years, I've, I've tried to do that, and it's and it's and it's been good because although I you know I can't I can't want to be a hypocrite and say I don't waste money. I don't try and waste money, but I do consume. I do buy bits and pieces, but I'm also very very aware. Like I just bought a new pair of trainers, but I made sure I sold my last pair before I brought them. Because little things like that, I've set myself these little these little rules and, and being honest. Yeah, you've like, always I, been good like that. And, yeah, and, and as you've seen it, you've probably seen it over the years. I'm, I'm I do like to like wear nice clothes and stuff, but at the same time, I'm not I'm not like a multi millionaire that can afford to just spend a ridiculous amount of money on clothes. So I like I like it, but at the same time, you'll see me. I'll, I'll sell my I'll sell my old pairs. I'll sell my old stuff. I can't I can't ever look into a wardrobe at, at like old clothes that I've spent lots of money on and, and just look at it. It makes me feel quite anxious to be honest. So I'm constantly on the cycle of, of, of I buy something new, but I made sure I've sold the, the you know, the old thing first. And I've I've been like that for a long time. Um and I'll still I'll still continue to do that. The more money I've earned, it's not that's not made me kind of feel like I'm now I don't have to worry, I'm just gonna buy loads of stuff and not think about it. I'm still very, very on it. Like literally the other day I I wouldn't buy a pair of shoes because I still had another pair sitting there that I just thought I just don't want to see them both sitting next to each other because I don't need one both of them. So I made sure the other one went and alhamdulillah, I sold it for a good price and it was amazing because it covered my new pair. And that's just being re- being really honest. I'm like I'm really like aware of with every little penny. Um so yeah, like no expert but the the more I have have earned, the more I've tried to learn the best way of, of dealing with that. Um, and what's going to benefit you the most? I think learning learning about investment and learning about what to do with your money, how you make your money work for you, and all that kind of stuff is, is the journey I'm on now. Because you know, if we're talking to a point where you get to earn some money and you have some savings sitting there, there's you know, there's no point it sitting in your bank doing absolutely nothing. It's kind of like once you acquire some money, you need to work out, okay, cool, how can this money benefit me? How can this money work for me? You know, it's one of those things. You know, rich people. Um, rich people's money works for them. They don't just let it sit in the bank and, and build up piles and piles of savings. Although savings are good, of course, um, but you don't want to have loads and loads of money sitting there. So it's about working out what do you do with your money after you've, after you've saved it and, and what's the, the, the best ways of, 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 sort of figuring that out. So that's the journey I'm on now. So yeah, that's my thoughts on, on what you said, really. Yeah, I like that. Okay, rule number two. So rule number two, it says, what I wrote is, this is what I wrote on the notes. I wrote, great inside and bad outside. That's the note that I wrote, right? That was like the rule that I created. Now, this is not necessarily something that's like as hard and fa- a hard and fast rule. Like it doesn't have to be like this. But the thinking behind it was, so when you're out here in Dubai, bro, one of the things that you see, which you'll see when you come out here in a few weeks, is that there's some like, there's some phenomenal cars. People will have cars here that you don't see elsewhere or that you've not seen in London. And you see them quite regularly. Like maybe if you like constantly go into Knightsbridge, you'll see cars like this. But, um, mm-hmm. but you, know, you know, who's always in Knightsbridge? So, but here you see those cars on a regular basis. So one of the things that that does to you, even if you're not into cars, you start thinking, should I upgrade my car, right? And bro, cars are not a fitna for me, alhamdulillah. Like I've never, ju- I've never been like, oh, I need like, a, a certain car really like i've always said that like, i have a i have some like dream cars like i'd love a porsche panamera and stuff but it's like a, it's like a it's like a um it's like an answer to a to a question that people ask at at, at, at parties or whatever right like what's your dream car like, nothing not like oh like i'm not actually like thinking about it so anyway so i started having this thought exercise with me right i was like if i wanted to get a nice car how could i make sure like if i decide to get a nice car right how can I make sure that I'm getting the car not because of ego and I'm getting it because I want it, right? So then I was like, okay, fine. Because uh, uh, unanimously, I think we'd all agree that ego is bad. Do something for ego or just for what other people think, that's not a good thing to do. Islamically, generally, uh, I think everybody would agree with that, right? Doing something just because of ego. So I was like, okay, fine. So doing something because of ego is a no. So um, I have to figure out a way, like almost like a formula where I can just, if I was to get a nice car, for example, but this rule can be used for anything, by the way. I'm just using a car because it's a very easy example to give. Um, then how can I figure out a way where I can justify it from like a non-ego perspective? Um, and then I was thinking, well, like, what do I value? I suppose I do value comfort. Like I spend a lot of time in my car. So if I was going to upgrade a car, which I'm not anytime soon, um, then I would want to save and make sure I get a good car. And if I was to get a good car, then what do I value? Okay, comfort, I value, yeah, um, uh, can, um, what's the other word with that we convenience so like if, if it's going to save me time in the long run or money in the long run like i've got kids and stuff, space i value because i've got kids and shopping and stuff like that so then i started listing all these things in my head and then i was like the decision i decided to make was 
I want to set a rule in my life, which I haven't implemented yet. Like I'm, I'm not great at these are the rules I want to set. Where I'd rather have something that's good in the inside and bad in the outside than have something that's good in the outside but then is rubbish in the inside. And I suppose what I mean by that is, I back in London I have a, a Vauxhall Astra, right? But um, my Vauxhall Astra is, is fully loaded inside. It's not because I chose that. I just like it was actually the Qadr of Allah. It was it was, was second hand, but it ended up like I end up. I didn't even know much about cars. I didn't even check the specs, but I ended up like being like front sensors, back sensors and all that kind of stuff. And so I've, I love that and I've, I really value that. And it's given me a lot of comfort in the, in the few years that I was, when I was driving it. I was always really happy in my car because it had heated seats and all of that kind of stuff. But on the outside, it's just an Astra. Um, whereas I had friends who would spend two and a half grand, obviously, which is not, not a lot of money for a car. They spend two and a half grand on a BMW, an old BMW, like 2005 Beamer, right? And it's like inside, like it's just it's got it's got nothing because the cars in two thousand and five are fifteen years old or whatever. Uh, but they would they would value the fact that they could drive a BMW, and I always, that always puzzled me because I was like, well, I actually like I have a really smooth running engine, alhamdulillah, and everything like, but I don't drive a BMW, right? So I was thinking that this rule that I want to set myself is I want to prioritize um, the things that I care about, even if they, uh, even if like, I mean, do you remember on Freshly Guided years ago I said something like I have this weird dream of like having a really nice house on the inside, but it looking really ugly on the outside. I've changed my mind on that. Obviously, no one wants an ugly ha looking house. But the point of that is, the sentiment is still true, that I'd rather have a house that inside's got all like the convenience and like the, 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 the secret room with the bookshelf and like the, the heated carpets and all that kind of stuff. And it just looked m rubbish on the outside like a normal house than for it to be the opposite uh, way. So my rule is that if I'm going to buy something, am I buying it because it looks good and f because of ego or am I buying it because genuinely it adds value to my life? And maybe a side benefit of it could be that because I'm buying certain comforts or certain values, it ends up being like something that perhaps, you know, doesn't look the worst. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, for the example of the house, I, I would have to say, give me a really tatty looking house, but inside it's levels and it's amazing of course i'd pick that any day um probably with the car as well for example if i was going if i had to get a car and i was doing lots of lots of travels and, and that's what i knew i was getting my car for i knew i was doing long distance i knew i'd spend a lot of time in it i knew that i was doing work from it i'd probably i'd probably say it doesn't really matter what car it is as long as it's comfy inside and it, and it drives me from a to b reliably i'm blessed that doesn't matter but going back to what you said about your friends with the BMWs, you know, potentially in their defense and in many people's defense, maybe their dream car is a BMW because let's face it, BMW is up there with a lot of people's dream car. And they would probably be able to look past the fact that inside they're cold, it's crap, it's a bit dirty, it's a bit rusty because they're driving their dream car. And actually, it doesn't really matter about the little details inside because they're actually you know, achieving the, their goal of driving their dream car, BMW. And, you know, it's ultimately, they look past the details mm -hmm. that, you know, are yeah, missing from point. it. And just forgetting, not everything, oh, ego, ego, yeah, that's fine. But when it comes to things like cars, you know, typically people love the aesthetics of a car and a beautiful looking car. And generally speaking, the beautiful looking cars are the, you know, the branded cars such as BMW, Mercedes, everything else, and, and everything above. Um... So I don't I don't think it's I don't think it's wrong to, to, to want something which is aesthetically beautiful. Allah loves beauty. I think these cars are beautiful. I think you've got it with the intention that you've got it just so someone just so your neighbour or your friend thinks that you're smashing it and you're the man because you've got the car, that's 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 questionable. But to be able to sort of aim to get something like one of these things I'm saying, these dream cars and whatever else I think people just do that and they, they look past the fact that it's not quite perfect, but they're actually, they get to say they've got a BMW and they've got a BMW Keering and that's the thing that gives them happiness. They've actually, they've got that, they've got that, they've got that brand. They finally got that brand. So that was my thoughts on, on, on what you said there. Yeah, that actually leads me, I don't disagree with you. That actually leads me to my third rule, which is um, getting wins from things that aren't a fitness for me. So, uh, the, the the idea of the, and, and actually it kind of like fits in with rule four which is like not being too harsh myself for things that are a fitna so a, a, a like 
BMW, not a fit enough for me. Like, I'm not like, um, I don't, sh- I, it's not a struggle for me to like accept if I, for example, wasn't to have one. Um, mm-hmm. Whereas if it was, then I'll be easy on myself. Like, look, it's not the end of the world. Like, it's something that I desire and it's quite a, it's quite a temptation for me. Um, so and it's not like haram to buy a BMW, right? Like Aslan. So um, that that's like the, the kind of the next rule, the rule of like about fitness. So getting wins over things that aren't a fitness for me. The idea of that is if something's expensive, uh, but like it, it's not like, yeah, it's not a fit enough for me is the best way I can say it. Like just go for the cheaper option. So I was, I'm not going to do it, but I was looking at like gym equipment today because every now and again, I look at gym equipment online thinking, well, shall I get home gym stuff? And there was a bar, right? A barbell. And one of them, the difference of the price of these two barbells, same barbell, difference of the price was like, I don't know, um, maybe like 50 quid difference. But they were the same, right? Essentially, the difference was the design. And I kind of did like the one, the design of the, of the more expensive one, which was like a camo design. And the other one was like plain <laughs> black. So I was looking at them. I was like, if I were to get, get one of these, um, I suppose like it's not that big of a fit enough for me that like I really want something to be designed nice because I'm the only one going to be using it and stuff like that. So if in those scenarios, I can get an easy win. Um, reversely, if something is a fit enough for me, so for example, uh, the example of buying coffees out. So here in Dubai, bro, and I'm, I'm so excited for you to come because I'm going to take you so many of these places. The coffee is a different level. Like it's, it, the, it's just... St- Stunning. When you go to the coffee shops here, I don't know, man. Like uh, uh, maybe because like there's more of a culture of importing here. So like they, if they're gonna import, they just import the best. Whereas I don't know what it is, bro. But go to the independent coffee shops here, and you just have an absolutely stunning cup of coffee every time. The, the 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 opportunity cost of that is that coffees here are not like the the price of coffees in the UK. So I think in UK you could get whole coffee for like three pound, maybe three pound fifty. In in the UAE, generally, it's like six pounds for a cup of coffee. And so I was thinking about this, right? I was like, oh, like, I should tighten my belt a bit with coffees. Like, why am I buying every single day? I'm basically buying a coffee out, right? Like, at least one of my coffees out tends to be from outside. So I was like, I should probably be careful with that. And then I was like, you know what? That is a fit enough for me. I do enjoy a good coffee. I, I, I get so much more out of it than just... Um, the taste I get to go that these the environment the culture I get to like free up my brain for a bit and just like it, it, I get a lot out of it so I was like you know what that is a fitness for me so I'm not going to be as tough for myself like it's yeah it's six pound for a coffee it's like two or three pound more expensive than it would be in the UK but actually that's a weak a weakness or, or temptation of mine whereas other things aren't I'll indulge so that's the kind of next rule I've, I've mixed two in one there <coughs> I say if you like it that much, which you clearly do, because the passion of how you described how beautiful the coffee shops are there, and the fact that you're talking about something that's halal, it may be six pounds, but the fact that you're so passionate about it and you love it that much, treat yourself. Treat yourself. Don't don't overdo it. Don't don't have too many a day, or maybe have a couple a week. But I don't know the little things in life, bro. I don't know. For me, I would say I would personally say not to sound ignorant, but don't overthink it. If you enjoy a cup of coffee, it might be six quid, but. Let's face it, it's not like you're trying to prevent yourself from going into the local bar to get a Budweiser. That's the full sorry to say that, but it's not like, we're talking about coffee here. Go and have your, go and have your coffee, get your mind racing, clear your stomach, all the rest of it, and, and enjoy <laughs> it. I mean, I, I, I think, I'm, I'm, I hate to sound ignorant, I wouldn't, I wouldn't overthink ever myself, like, indulging in things like buying too much coffee and all that kind of stuff, especially if I enjoyed it. If it's halal, bang it off, bismillah, enjoy it. Yeah, that's sorry. a good way to be. Yeah. Okay, final yeah. rule then is the rule that um, I read recently, which was live below your... Uh, no, it's, it's a tweet that I read. I think it's from Alex Formosi, and it said, um, we need to start uh, gla- glamorizing uh, living below your means as a sign of wealth, as opposed to a sign of like... As, as, as a sign of wealth, essentially. So you should look at someone who... like So the classic video of Jeff Bezos, uh, and that interview where he's, he's driving his car, and the interview goes... Uh, I read recently that you're now worth one billion dollars, and Jeff Bezos goes, "Okay." And then the guy's like, "The reason I ask that, the reason I say that, is because you're driving like a a banger Honda Civic." And Jeff Bezos was like, "This is a good car, and it works perfectly fine. Why would I replace it?" And so, like, that's a perfect example of living below your means being a sign of wealth, and like actually being a a, a great thing. So, that's my like final rule. Like, are there situations where I'm 
Because the opposite is living ab- ab- above your means, which is definitely bad. But then I suppose there's living with, like, within your means, which I suppose is great and good, and you can't fault it. But then there's living below your means, which if you can do that and get win wins, um, especially over things that actually don't really matter that much, then perhaps that's a good way to be. Would you describe as a win? As in not, not sort of wasting money? A win, yeah, would be like... Oh, I did that and uh, I feel fine about it and it didn't actually affect my life negatively at all, I guess. Yeah. It it could be the difference um, of like it could be if you're getting like a home coffee machine, right? And you could spend 750 quid or you could spend a grand. And it's like actually in that in in that category of coffee machines, they're all going to be kind of give you the same thing. Like if unless you're spending like seven hundred fifty quid or or, or three thousand pound, where probably the three thousand pound one is substantially different, you're probably going to like after a few months, like be like, you know what, it would have been the same either way. And so that it's almost like a win to save that, you know, five hundred quid or whatever. I was going to upgrade my. Um my seat on the flight over over here. I was going to upgrade it. I told myself that is a fit for me. Yeah, as but let me. So the day before, I was trying to get I was trying to get Mahi and whoever to call up and 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 get the extra legroom sorted out because obviously I'm so tall. As I've spoken to you about it many times, I need do need some extra legroom for a comfortable flight, especially if it's a long flight. I had an eleven hour flight. I was thinking I need to have extra legroom. The um the system was down, so no one could get it. So they basically said when you get to the airport, you have to speak to someone. Got there, it was too late to get the just to get moved or whatever. So they offered me economy plus or some, something. I didn't, you know, I didn't book these flights. I had no control. So I was just, I was, I was grateful, took what I had. And then I was offered it at the airport, economy plus. I thought it sounds, sounds crap. It's when it's economy plus. It doesn't sound like you're offering me much. It was 300 pounds. So I stood there, I thought about it. I thought I need a comfortable flight. I need to be able to stretch my legs. I don't want to be like cramped because it will kill me. It would be horrible. But I'd said, no, I said, no, actually no. No, really? Bro, yeah. three hundred pound at your height, I think for yeah, eleven hour flight, I, I would have all day every eleven hours. I would have taken it all day every day. You're six foot <clears> six at least, I was, Sam. I was confident in my lord, like he always does, that he will put me somewhere on that plane that isn't going to destroy me. And alhamdulillah, I had a beautiful seat. I had leg. I had my leg. I was I was great. And I was sitting next to, to Josh and Jordan, so it also gave me a lot of time to be able to do bits and pieces. So nice. Anyway, my point was, I said no to the three hundred pounds. But now I'm going to, on Monday night, I'm going to the, the Blazers game and that's costing me 300 pounds. Okay. So fine. it's all like, this is yeah. the thing. This is the thing. If I did 300 quid on the flight, that's gone. That's been and done. I would have been here either way. I, w- I would have forgotten about that by now. True, true. But then I would have done, would have done 300 quid on the flight. Then I'm doing 300 quid on the basketball. That's 600 quid very quickly. I'm going ice hockey tonight. That could be a hundred bucks. It's, it's, it all snowboards. So for me, <laughs> bucks, let, me yeah. just scope, let, let me scope out what, what's really important and what's not. I like and I, don't get me wrong, I, I can afford to put 300 quid extra, considering I didn't pay for the flight in the first place. I could pay, I could, I can afford that, no problem. But it's still 300 quid, and I really do value yeah. money. And I know that 300 quid can go somewhere better. And I know that my basketball game, which I said, let me, let's get the slightly better seats because I want yeah. to have a great experience. I'm not really going to go to one again. So yeah, pattern me, put an extra 100 quid on top, which we've done, and I'll get to that. For me, is is, is money well spent. Yeah, I'm I like going to go get to enjoy go and get to enjoy that and like I said I would be here either way I would have flown here either way whether the flight was a pain in the ass or not I would be here now and I would have forgotten about it yeah so for me that that's that's how I roll bro like I think I even said this last time like I kind of like I can afford to do certain things but I'll, I will I'll I won't in, in in many situations and even like speaking for Josh Josh is you know he's done very well for himself and he tried on a jacket yesterday in a vintage shop everyone's saying wow it looks amazing it was a really cool jacket and it looked so good on him he knew it looked good on him and he was like, nah, that one over there, is, the one he had, he was wearing, he said, it's, it's quite similar anyway. And they weren't that similar. But I was like, yeah, you're right. And he put it down, put his jacket on and walked out. And it looked so good. He, and he was really feeling himself. But I, I've spent a lot of time with Josh. And this is someone, you know, he is an inspiration of mine. And, and how he moves with, with his money, he, he never wastes a penny. He never really? wastes a penny. Like he really, he doesn't waste a penny. He doesn't waste a penny. Like so that. being around that, that's probably like part of like why I'm saying no to the air, at the airline stuff is because like, I know how he rolls. He rolls very, very like minimal with everything. So yeah, it's it's a good way to be. Um, but there could be another situation where I get offered, I get offered something that costs a bit of money. If if I really value it and I know I'm going to get like a great memory or great enjoyment or whatever from it, I, I, I will assess it and, and and potentially do it. But more time, I'm trying to live like a broke person and just trying to kind of keep it all back. So yeah.
that's my thoughts on your your third one. Yeah, it's interesting that, because uh, so that, that flight thing is a fitting of mine as well, right? Which it, it kind of shouldn't be, right? But it, like I always, I have like this one rule in my life which I need to like man up with, which is that when I'm traveling. <laughs> Like I, I'm like I go super easy on myself. I'm like don't I don't because I know how stressful traveling can be, especially for me. Like I'm I can be easily irritated when traveling. I'm like whatever ease I can get, I'll take. Right now I can't afford to upgrade myself to business class, let alone first class, because the difference is like two thousand pounds. It's not a couple hundred quid. Like where anywhere I would generally go, like especially now it'd be like Dubai to London. Right, the difference is two grand. So that's that's not something that like, I'm gonna be able to do. Right. However, one thing that I do do pretty much every time I book a flight is I always pay £30 extra to select my seat and I always select the exit seat with, so I can like, stretch my legs. And so I was, telling my, I, I was telling my wife the other day, um, I had booked a flight, and I said, um, I, said I, I, I selected my seat. And she, go, she looked at me, she goes... <laughs> She goes, you don't need extra leg room. So she said, um, she says you don't need leg room. And so I, I saw my pride because obviously that I didn't, was hurtful. I didn't hear, I haven't heard, I haven't heard any of what you're saying, bro. I don't know what you're saying. Oh, you're I don't joking. Know I don't know what you're saying. Okay. Well, I, so I said, what are you, talking about? Did, you heard know. what I said about like, I pay the 30 pound extra, right? That's the, yeah, then you cut off. Yeah, so then I, I told my wife, I booked a flight the other day and I told my wife I paid the 30 quid extra to, to select my seat for the extra legroom. And she goes, she turned and she looked at me, she goes, yeah, but you don't need the extra legroom. And I said, I had to swallow my pride because that hurt. Uh, and then I was like, I guess you're right. Uh, but it's not nice hearing that from your wife. Essentially, she was saying I was sure, which you don't want to kind of hear from your wife. Um, but then I was like, yeah, I guess... I didn't really know what to say. I think one of the ways I initially used to justify paying the extra money for the extra leg room is because I used to say, oh, if I need to pray on the flight, then I've got that extra space to pray, which is true. But now I don't know if I'm using that as an excuse because I, I think this particular flight, there's no prayers <laughs> and I still did it. So uh, yeah, I, I, I find traveling quite like, I don't love it. And so if I can get myself any ease, like 30 quid, bro, like mm. I know that if I was sitting between two like large men who were like, one time I was sat on this British Airways flight and the guy next to me was just drinking and drinking and drinking and drinking and I just stunk alcohol at that point I would have paid a hundred pound let alone 30 quid so to get yeah. a bit of comfort 30 quid like not the end of the world even stuff like when I always book um like if I'm traveling by myself with my family, I'll always book a car for, for that guy to come and it says Faisal and then like he takes me, like I always book that um, and like I'll book car seats and stuff in advance so that I, if I'm in some foreign country, I land, there's a guy there with my name, me and my kids, we're in that person's car, it's comfortable, they were waters for us, he loads the car up with the suitcases, he drops me into our location, we could take it from there and I arrange all of that when I'm in the UK like in advance or when I'm in Dubai in advance. Like I, I, like, so with traveling, I am like that. But yeah, nothing stupid. Not like two grand, but little things like that, bro. Like, bro, you get a cab from the airport. You're talking, about, you're, talking about, you're, talking, you're talking about 30 quid. I think that's, that's reasonable. 30 quid yeah. to be able to uh, pick where you want to go is definitely reasonable. 100%. Yeah. What were um, you going to say, sorry? No, I was going to say like, you know, you get a cab from an airport. It, it, they, they're absurdly priced. So you're paying 50 quid anyway. So for me to pay, pay, pay an extra 30 quid or 40 quid on top of that to get like a chauffeur yeah. to come pick us up, like big car, loaded thing. Up, I, I, I value that. I just add that to the budget of the holiday or whatever. So Yeah, nice. Yeah, nice. Fair play. I'm anyway. Get that point one day. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> uh, bro, you've got a pick up uh, very soon. So yes. I'll let you go. Thanks, man, for jumping on the pod. Even, you. even, even though you're in... Uh, yeah, uh, Portland, Portland or Oregon and Oregon. Um, yeah. and enjoy the, bla okay. enjoy the Blazers Blazers game man thank you yeah I will I will I'll let you know how it goes we'll keep an eye on the story unmute it and watch it you'll like it <laughs> yeah. yeah please uh, keep, keep us updated man I'm, I'm, I'm loving that man we'll catch up probably in a couple of weeks in Charlotte oh and obviously you're here in uh, Dubai soon which I'm really looking forward to yeah Quick question before you log off uh, for uh, about Dubai, bro. Yeah. Do you have anything booked in the calendar that I can't touch, or can I start booking a few things in? I haven't booked anything. I haven't booked anything. Cool. I'm going to send you a voice note. One thing. Charlotte. One thing you need to do is upgrade my um, my uh, chair. Obviously, what we, were, what we were just talking about. Yeah, so yeah. If you could just give me the uh, no the um, business one. Um, okay. So we'll, we'll first, I think you have control over the whole flights thing. I, I threw all the details to you, so you, could do, you can edit your booking how you like now. <laughs> <laughs> all right, bro. All right, cool. Enjoy America, bro. Thank you, bro. Nice to meet you.